डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू आवर क्लास ऑन जे आर एफ एस आर एफ नेट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू इन दिस क्लास वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग नेचुरल फार्मिंग मेजर डिफरेंसेस व्हाट वी डिस्कस इन द प्रीवियस क्लास जस्ट ए स्मॉल रिकैपिटुलेशन देन वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड सम मेमोरी टाइप बिट्स एज वेल सो नाउ द फर्स्ट बिट फर्स्ट आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस विथ यू व्हाट इज ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इज एन इनपुट बेस्ड फार्मिंग सिस्टम ऑर्गेनिक फार्मिंग इज एन इनपुट बेस्ड फार्मिंग सिस्टम इन विच we just uh, add inputs uh, as per the guidelines and principles in a, in contrast in the natural farming uh, it is uh, uh, locally sourced material are used as inputs there are no specific principles and guidelines this is the major difference between organic farming and natural farming now as far as uh, major differences between these two are concerned a further major differences uh, uh this fertilizers and uh, okay nutrients for example in case of organic farming yes there are uh, there is a scope for uh, addition of uh, eco friendly fish eco friendly fertilizers and nutrients uh, it is not the case in uh, natural farming second thing is uh, na- organic farming is a uh it, it is uh, uh, it, it permits uh, eco friendly weed sites uh, whereas in natural farming they are not uh, in inputs are concerned inputs cost is more in organic farming input cost is less in uh, natural farming L- labor is concerned uh, yes there is a lot of labor requirement money has to be spent on the organic farming whereas in uh, natural farming we call zero budget natural farming so labor cost is very very much less here now coming to another important thing with reference to certification is concerned organic products are certified there is a procedure there are certain principles there are certain guidelines whereas in natural farming farmers themselves give confidence to others such that they turn into natural farm there is no certification or anything in uh, uh, natural farming yeah, above all what is required in the organic farming is a uh, lot of investment it's uh, in other words is a luxury okay organic farming means the products are high the cost of produce is high whether you eat or whether you keep it for economic I mean, commercial purposes but the entry is very different for anybody because of the certification procedures because of the labor involvement because of new I men guidelines guided guidelines guided uh, inputs are uh, very much there in the organic farming whereas it is uh, uh, there are no specific guidelines uh, in the natural farming that is zero budget natural farming now here in both the cases whether it is organic farming whether it is natural farming or it is permaculture or some other uh, of course non pesticide non insecticide farming different uh, uh, farming are there in everything there is a need for uh, microbials microbials what are the sources of microbials say for example indigenous microbial solutions you wanted to prepare okay in any uh, natural or organic or uh, you can say permaculture or non insecticidal farming whatever may be the farming you are doing it uh, there is a need for microbial solution but the sources are entirely different uh, these are uh, more, there is a possibility for a bit to be given in this that's why i am interested to share with you some information on in, uh, indigenous microbial solutions uh, product source of microorganism in other words we call it as the product source of microorganism from where we get the my cattle dung for example so cellulose lignin solubilizing bacteria nitrogen fixing bacteria phosphorus solubilizing bacteria endobacteria okay entomo pathogenic bacteria these are all there in available in the cattle dung second source is buttermilk it is a lactobacillus is available in buttermilk and uh, okay if you go to the soil itself uh, so pseudomonas rhizobium alterobacter etc uh, will give microbial uh, uh, sources you know microbial uh, availability in sources of nutrients are concerned sugar first for example if you take sugars uh, they can be derived from they can be obtained from or they can be taken from yagari sugar cane juice honey fruits etc fats are concerned ghee oil oil cake proteins are concerned pulse 
uh, floors, pulp floors, uh, we use them. So these are all the major sources of uh, either microorganisms or nutrients uh, in case of uh, any farming where you are using it. Uh, they are very, very safe, eco-friendly and accepted by society. Okay, absolutely there is no uh, hazardous uh, uh, element in any of these things. Now, in addition to that, what are the advantages of uh, these indigenous microbial solutions? So that you must be, know it. Uh, once again, for your academic interest, I would like to share with you what are the advantages of indigenous microbial solutions, indigenous microbial sources otherwise, indigenous nutrient sources. So what are the advantages? Wonderful advantages are there in any form. A bit is likely to come in this. That's why I would like to share with you that as the indigenous microbial products are collected from local soil and animal dung, these are well suited to local conditions. You are taking from the local soils, local animals, so that they are very much useful in the uh, long run for the benefit of the uh, microbial sources uh, inputs in any form. That's what. Now, so naturally occurring, they are naturally occurring. So then what happens? These are robust and survive adverse weather conditions. And these are all these also reflect microbial diversity. How microbial diversity is coming from the uh, buttermilk, say from the cattle dung, from the soil itself, sources of nutrients, sugars, fats, proteins from jaggery, sugar cane, sugar juice, sugars, ghee, oil, oil cake, fats, pulses, where we will supply protein. So these are all the things you know that would help the farmers okay as a source of uh, microbial products uh, so since these are collected from local soil and animal dung uh, these will be suited to directly to local conditions uh, naturally occurring hence uh, are robust and so survive adverse weather conditions uh, these also reflect microbial diversity why microbial diversity because dung or uh, cattle dung then uh, your own uh, uh, what you call you know buttermilk uh, our soils sources of nutrients. Now based on this, the suggestions to the farmers, some suggestions to the farmers, whether it is an NGO, whether it is a, a good governmental organization exclusively working for either for organic farming or natural farming or permaculture or non-pesticidal farming, whatever it may be, the size application of organic matter in any form is important because in any in, in all these farmings the main thrust is on in the early class in the beginning of the class i told the commonalities are increasing cropping intensity through multiple cropping system increasing soil organic matter increasing soil health particularly microbial population all these things are very very common across this farming that's why application of organic matter is a, an important aspect in all these farming it can be used as a Organic matter can be used as mulching, composting, crop residues, green manure, in situ green manure, what not, amendment, soil amendment for that matter, okay, dung from any animal, whether it is cow, ox, buffalo, desi or crossbed, okay, prefer the animals that are preferred are grazing and silage eating animals are preferred rather than okay, grain or concentrate eating animals. So that is also a little bit advantages over the other sources. Now, so some bits of memory type I would like to share with you. <coughs> Why memory type? See, um, even though these are all the common bits that you may come across in any book only to inspire you, only to educate you uh, such that these memory type bits also are important. We try to understand some few bits, you know. Disease occurring regularly in the same area is called endemic. See, COVID-19 is a pandemic. Okay, what is endemic? Possibility is there for a question to be asked. That's why disease occurring regularly in the same area is called endemic. Disease that occurs at regular intervals is called sporadic disease. Okay, usually the shape of growth curve is sigmoid, whether it is natural farming, organic farming, permaculture, non-insecticidal farming, whatever it may be. Well, what is very, very important is the shape of the growth curve is sigmoid. 
Now, Dyson M45 is the trade name of Mancoja. Dyson Jet 78 is the trade name of Zion V. See, Dyson M45, Dyson Jet 78, usually Thyram for that matter. These are all uh, used as basically seed, okay, um, for, for uh, protection of the seed. Okay, a seed treatment in other words, technically we call it a seed treatment. Uh, in addition to that, you know, all the um, in fungicidal uh, diseases, f f fun fungus, uh, fungus attack, uh, we usually go for Dyson M4 by Dyson Z78. That's why possibility is there, the question may be asked. So like that you train up your main mind such that, you know, you will be preparing some sort of uh, memory type which as well like this. Next bit is uh, in which machine the e DNA amplification is done. Thermal cycler DNA was first synthesized by A. Kornberg in 1953. <coughs> Double cross hybrids of maize are developed by CGMS line. Double cross technique of maize is given by D.F. Jones in the year 1920. Double superphosphate contains 35% of phosphorus. Downy milieu of cucurbits is caused by okay, pseudo thermospora. Acubensis. Downward, downward curling of leaves in tobacco and tea shows uh, sulfur deficiency. Yes, deficiency. Okay. Another bit is that sulfur deficiency is almost close to nitrogen deficiency. That bit also is likely to appear. Only to train uh, and uh, to inspire you, these type of bits also coming. I am uh, just uh, trying to enlighten you uh, furthermore on downward movement of nutrients and salts from the root zone. With the water is called leaching. In reptiles and birds, uh, nitrogen is uh, okay uh, excreted in the form of uric acid. Downy milieu of grapevine is uh, controlled by borax mixer or borax paste. Drainage away from uh, drainage away water from rice fields is advocated for the control of. Case form. In case of case form, what we do? Just uh, after the crop had grown to the level of, uh, say, uh, 35 days after so, transplanting. So then, what happens? We take uh, uh, some uh, rope. Uh, two uh, workers uh, in the field, you know, uh, they held the rope uh, on both sides uh, on the buns, and then they move it like this so that case worms are uh, um, for falling on the water and then water is allowed to go out. That is one of the locally successful uh, indigenous technique for case worm control in rice. Similarly, drip irrigation was discovered in Israel and it is also known as Trickle irrigation, T R I C K L E, trickle irrigation. Drip irrigation is suited for which type of crop? This bit has appeared at least two times in the last 10 exams of the uh, RF SRF net. What is that bit? Drip irrigation is suited for wider space orchard crops, sugar cane, and particularly in cereal soils. In the multiple choices, uh, or you can say that uh, part A, part B, match the part A with part B. Some, sometimes uh, this bit will come, which is that drip irrigation is suited for, maybe given, uh, maybe one of the answers will be wider space orchard crop. Second, saline soils. Third one, sugar cane crop. So any one may be given, you should go for matching it with the answers that are given in the below, the A, B, C, D answers. There you have to pick up. Here showing honeydew symptoms is the, say, is the feature of grain smut of basra. Grain smut of basra, there you find uh, dew, honeydew symptoms you will find. So early blight of potato and tomato are caused by Alternaria solani. Early maturing Pisian pea variety is Kazanus Kazan flavus. Early variety of bear is Seb, S E B Seb. Uh, Earth's atmosphere is held basically by which pressure? Okay, which force in other words? You know, Earth's atmosphere is held by gravitational force. Basically by gravitational force. The lithosphere is uh, solid portion. The water portion is hydrosphere. Atmosphere is the third sphere which is held by gravitational force. That's why half of the atmosphere lies up to 7 kilometers. So that's why. Okay. Now earthing up of potato and groundnut is done at earthing up. We, we just cover the roots that have protruded from the soil. So 30 to 35 days after sowing. Economic part of Clove, economic part of clove is uh, flower bud. Economic part of null coal is uh, extended.
stem last two bits of today's class economic part of sweet potato is adventitious roots edible part of cauliflower is Uh, head it is actually a flower so these are all the bits that i would like to share with you in this class we meet in our next class uh, thanking you very much for your very patient hearing